Oh. I have our cup. We are Cervini Angels. Oh, oh my God. Gosh, I don't have my cup, Rachel. I'm such a goober. Oh, it's it's somewhere. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll find it maybe in the commercial break. Guess what oh I was- Oh my God, please put that down. Look at that haircut. Put it down. No, I, I don't mean to be creepy, but this is what I was on my couch with and then eventually in bed with. I couldn't put it down and I just read it front to back. It's all dog-eared. And what I loved about this cookbook, reading it last night, Rachel, was how much I feel like no one is like you. You talk about grabbing a handful as a measurement, taking the stress out. I, I think you're one of the most incredibly liberating and, and encouraging people to be freer in the kitchen. You know, I never thought I would write a cookbook or be on television ever. So. When I approached writing, it was always from the point of view of the home cook, not of the chef or professional or aspiring to be anything other than hungry and making dinner. I still write in the same manner 26 uh, books later, and now they're more like memoir mashups. I just finished my 27th and delivered it in December. It'll be out next September. And it's, it's mostly essays and some recipes, but I still write in the same manner that I did all those years ago. You have had such an incredible journey and you have accomplished so much in your life. And I was wondering if you would take a trip down memory lane with me and look at some milestones and memories. I'm good with anything for you, buddy. Okay, let's take a look at Rachel through the years. Oh my God. All right, 1968, Rachel was born on August 25th. What are some of your very first memories uh, when you were a kid? My very first memory is my mom uh, in the kitchen at the restaurant. Our, our restaurant was called The Carvery and we were out in uh, Cape Cod. And I remember being on my mom's hip and she was fighting with uh, a purveyor on the phone while she was heating up all of the griddles and grills and cooktops and, uh, you know, she was turning everything on in the restaurant. And she went to hang up the phone, she put me down. And I put my hand up to grab a spatula and I grilled my entire thumb from here to here to the stovetop. Ah! And to say it's a darker color than the rest of my hand. And that is literally my first memory in life griddling myself. So it's kind of a Harry Potter-ish thing. You know what I mean? It's like, I, that certainly said what I was born to be and what, what I've done with the whole rest of my 52 years. I love that story so much. Let's see which year we're going to next. Oh gosh. 1982, you started working as a bus girl, dishwasher and fountain girl. What did those jobs teach you and prepare you for the years to come? Dish machine operator, not a very glamorous life. Uh, a DMO, I was the DMO. And when I got promoted to the fountain, I thought my life would be amazing. It was like Cinderella. Like it was like being a prom queen to go to the fountain and get to wear a dress and waitress shoes instead of being at this 120 degree dish machine buried in 3,000 dishes that smell like, you know, eggs and hamburgers. It was just so exciting. And then um, I realized that I was too short to scoop the ice cream. And there was a little faucet that would clean the scoops. So there was a constant stream of leftover ice cream on the side of the ice cream cooler. So when I'd push myself up and throw myself, hurl myself into the ice cream cooler to get the ice cream, I ended up with a line of melted, sour, every flavor that Howard Johnson served of ice cream across my boobs. So I became the girl with the ice cream boobs. Not only was it worse than me at the dish machine, but I was out in public and I had a line across myself and I smelled. So thanks for bringing up some fun times. We said last night it was like you had two scoops. And yes, double, yes. I yep. also didn't anticipate, Rachel, that I would be dressed like a soda jerk today. So this is perfect. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next. You so are. I really. <laughs>
Really? I mean, okay, 1985, you started your first business called Delicious Liaisons while you were in high school. What was it? Um, Dangerous Liaisons was a big movie, a big, big stage production, big movie and great, great book and whatever. So I thought Delicious Liaisons, what a fun name. So I just for fun, I made a fake catalog of Delicious Liaisons gift baskets for people. <laughs> and I showed it to my mother and she thought it was so delightful. She took it down to the print shop and she had a bunch of these made up. So I just started handing them out to random people at the grocery store, at the pizza place, in my class, give this to your mom, your dad. And I started making uh, baskets for sale. It, it was just really an art project. But well, and <laughs> you know, the, the origin story of a pioneer. Next, we are going to the year 1997. You launched 30 Minute Meals. <laughs> Oh my God. With local news station. Yes, WRGB. Oh, WRGB. And you were in upstate New York. What was the initial launch like? My, my boss, who's one of my best friends to this day, Donna Carnival. We are, her, her birthday's this week, by the way. Happy birthday, Donna. Happy birthday. Yeah, we are, we are super dear friends to this day. Donna said, people love your food why don't you just teach the class? We, we had an idea to sell cooking classes and we, we made the mistake as two real savvy business ladies to underprice the classes. So when we went to ask chefs to teach the classes that we were selling so that we could sell more groceries, uh, we would have lost money rather than made. So Donna said, well, you just teach the class. I said, but Donna, I'm not a chef. She said, who cares? Everybody likes your food. They buy it prepared in the case. So you teach them. So the news uh, station, WRGB, the world's first news station, because it's the home of uh, GE, General Electric. It was literally the world's first television station. They wow. came to do a, a piece on us and our little class. And it became a weekly segment and I would go to people's homes and firehouses and police stations. And I would teach literally anybody who would let us in how to make a 30 minute meal. That's that, it was a, a weird circumstance. Well, I don't care about anyone's business prowess because you can't deny the power of 30 minute meals. That's a billion dollar idea. It's so good. <laughs>